Hey folks, it's Gregory here with Old Europe Antique Home Furnishings. And where do you think I am? Am I in Germany? Am I in jolly old England? No, actually, I'm just outside of Austin, Texas, the Sherwood Forest Fair. It's the Renaissance Festival, and it's spring, and that's what they do around here. So, I wanted to include this in today's video, some of the sights and sounds. Take a look at this castle over here. Not too bad, huh? All right, well, we'll talk about some antiques, as usual, but I wanted to intersperse a few clips from the festivities as well. Let's get to it. Quilmonge de la Brioche. These were the infamous words uttered by Queen Marie Antoinette in the late 18th century, just prior to the French Revolution. And she paid for them with her head. I'm just kidding. Actually, I think a lot of historians would debate that point as to whether or not she ever spoke those words. But that's not the topic of today's video. The topic of today's video is empire style furniture and as you can see i am joined by napoleon bonaparte himself actually it is only a spelter sculpture of napoleon on a green marble plinth um and spelter just simply means metal and you may be asking yourself well what does napoleon have to do with empire style furniture and the answer is quite a bit and that's what i want to talk about today Today we're going to take an up close look at several pieces of empire style furniture and we're also going to discuss some of the history behind empire style furniture, how it came into being and why it looks the way it does. Okay, so let's start our discussion of empire style furniture with the discovery of Pompeii in 1749. And as I talk, I'm just going to show you some scenes from the shop to keep you from getting bored with the scenery. And then we will look at some really nice empire style furniture pieces. Go over those in a little bit. And in fact, there is an empire style lamp, green marble right there. It's one of a pair. I have uh, those for sale. And while we're here, I wanna show you this 17th, 18th century painting. I really like this piece. It's just had a bit of a refit to the frame. Some of the edges had some issues, so those have been restored. But uh, 1749. 1749 was when Pompeii was discovered. And as you can imagine, that had a significant impact on the imagination and the creativity of Europeans at the time. I mean, that was quite a discovery to be able to see those streets that were so old, their classical designs. In fact, that's really what inspired a shift from the Rococo, exceptionally exaggerated, curvilinear pieces of furniture to the neoclassical period. Of course, there was a period of transition, 1750 to 1770. This is known as the transition period, and there was a lot of furniture that was produced during that time. But by 1770, you really were into the neoclassical period of furniture design and also architecture. It had effects that rippled throughout society in, in in many ways. Now this is an empire style piece. Uh, probably a uh, late 19th, early, probably a 20th century piece. Really nice piece. There was a lot going on in France in the 18th century. And if you recall your history, 
1776, the American Revolution happened and it wasn't too long after that in uh, the early 1790s that the French decided to have a revolution of their own. It was at that point that Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette lost their heads and the monarchy gave way to a republic for the first time. And that republic was used by Napoleon as a stepping stone to gain power and eventually become the emperor of France. And the reason that's important is because empire style furniture is a direct result of Napoleon's ascension to the emperor in France. By 1795, the Republic was having some trouble and the directory took control. And at that time, Napoleon was a leader in the army. I'm not sure if he was a general yet. Eventually he was a general. And he managed to persuade the directorate to allow him to take the army to Egypt. And they were a little skeptical because he was young and ambitious, but at the end of the day, they decided to go along with it, claimed it as their own idea, because in fact, French aspirations to invade Egypt could be traced as far back as Louis XIV, the Sun King himself. So Napoleon took his army and 160 scholars, and they headed off to the land of Egypt. And while the campaign itself was not terribly successful, they did manage to learn a few things about Egypt, and more importantly, the things that they saw there, such as the Sphinx and some of the other designs and lion motifs and whatnot, had a big impact on the furniture when they got back to France. You had the neoclassical period from 1770 to 1790. Then you had the Directoire period from 1790 to roughly 1800. And from a little after 1800 to 1820 or so is the official empire style period. And empire style really, although it still maintains and retains some of the linear aspects of the neoclassical period, it also adds in some of these more exotic motifs. You have lion's heads, very Egyptian-esque looking motifs. And so that's how those became incorporated into French furniture. Now I want to show you this armoire. This is an empire style armoire. It's a beautiful piece with gilt bronze fittings. Okay, now I'm taking a little break from my live commentary at the shop as I'm editing because I want to read to you a quick passage about Empire Style Furniture. Generally, the Empire Style was characterized by a classicist, austere, and rectilinear basic shape with a predilection for semi and fully sculptural gilded metal decoration or carvings with gilding and antique style partial staining. This abundant representational ornamentation is derived from Egyptian, Greek, and Roman antiquity. The figurative and representational motifs were swans, lions, eagles, dolphins, sphinxes, caryatids, urms, warriors, cupids, obelisks, columns, pilasters, capitals, pedestals, and bases, as well as pedestal carvings or appliques such as paws and talons. The gilded metal decoration usually consisted of gilded bronze, to satisfy the aristocratic stylistic expectations. The primary wood type was the noble and exotic mahogany. It was prominent in the times of the first French empire due to its formal elegance and representative quality. Okay, now I want to take you over next door to the other space, and we're gonna take a look at an empire style desk. I really like this desk. Okay, I'm just going to show you a bit more footage from the fair while I walk to the desk. One thing that I find very interesting is that as the monarchy fell, many of the artisans and craftsmen who were building the furniture at the time were dependent on the monarchy and the, the, the courtiers and, and the nobility that 
thrived during the monarchy. And so when the monarchy came to an end, those people were, by and large, out of a job. So for about 10 years during the Republic and before Bonaparte really had begun his empire style, much of the furniture that had been produced, the Louis XV, the transitional Louis XVI styles of furniture, were kind of thrown out like a baby with the bathwater because they got rid of the monarch and the nobility and a lot of that furniture was auctioned off or sold privately for, at fire sale prices. The furniture makers really had a rough time during those first 10, 15 years of the Republic because they uh, weren't making that furniture for the nobility and the upper classes. So finally things got going again when uh, Napoleon's empire style furniture came into vogue. And of course, you would expect that as the would-be emperor, he demanded a very impressive style of furniture to display the power and wealth of the empire. I don't know you can see that very well. It's kind of dark. I will point this out. I have this, this map here. This was taken as a war prize uh, by US troops from Herman Goering's castle, and it's an aerial map, navigation map. Who knows, maybe this was used in the planning of the Blitz in London. But anyway, back to Empire style furniture. We can take a look at this. We'll take a look at uh, some of these drawers. Interesting thing about this piece is we have dovetails on the outside of the door, but not on the inside of the door. The same thing is true on some of these other doors. But I do feel like this is probably the original leather top on this piece. I wish it was a little lighter in here so you can get a better look. All right, I do have one last piece of Empire style furniture that I want to show you before we wrap this up. Got some silvering on the mirror there. Let's take a look at the inside. Definitely a French lock, double lock. Well, there you have it, my friends. Those are some of the Empire style pieces that we have in the store right now. And I do want to point out that the period from about 1804, 1805 up to 1820 is what we call the Empire style period. Furniture that was produced during those years is called period Empire furniture, whereas any furniture that would have been produced in the late 19th century or early 20th century, and there was a lot of it that was produced in that style would be called Empire style furniture. Now it might well be antique if it's over 100 years old and in the style of the Empire, but it would not be period Empire furniture. So with that, we're gonna go back over here and pose with the man that's responsible for it all Mr. Napoleon Bonaparte. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like button on the video and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.